Troy from Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by appliancevideo.com. For the repair today, what you're going to need is a quarter inch extension for your drill or a quarter inch nut driver, a multimeter, wire strips, flashlight, and electrical tape. Okay, today what we're looking at is a frigid air refrigerator. And as you can probably see from the displays up here that the freezer is at 71, your fresh food is at 75. They're both set to be at zero and at 37 respectively for the temperatures. So it is not cooling at all. And what I can show you or at least inform you of so that you'll know to look for is that this refrigerator, if I open the freezer up, I can hear the fan running. The fan in there is your evaporator fan. That's the fan that moves all the cold air from across your evaporator into the fresh food section and recirculates back around. So with that, with lights on and fans on, that's telling me that we have a compressor issue in the, by, in the back. It's either A, compressor is not working right, the starting components are not working right, or we're stuck um, with something completely burned out. I would say it could potentially be a defrost issue, but since the fan is on, it is not stuck in defrost. Um, and this unit itself, if you have this type of control setting up here, um, inside here is your defrost control board. And if it was stuck in defrost, we would have no fans on either. So what we have to do now is we have to pull the unit out, get to the compressor in the back. When I'm at the compressor in the back, off the compressor, there's gonna be three pins coming off of it once I remove the starting components. I'm gonna use my meter to check for uh, the actual ohms resistance across two, every two, every combination of the three and you're gonna have three separate readings. Two of the readings will add up to the total of the other reading. That will tell you what your windings are, and if they're okay or not. I'm gonna check from each pin to ground to make sure it's not shorted out to ground. If all that checks out okay, uh, chances are you have bad starting components. You could have potential damage to the inside of the compressor, but that's not something you could test for. Um, there is a universal starting component, which I will, essentially use on this unit if that's the problem to get it back up and running. So I'm going to pull the unit out now so we can get to the back. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move the screws pulling the back panel onto the unit. Once you remove the panel, slide it back up your water line just so you don't got to remove your water line. And I'm looking at that we have a Tecumseh compressor. Um, you can still use the starting components on the compressor. Um, being that it's a frigid air, from my experience and, and just our experience, that you'd have a potentially a, a higher fail rate um, with the starting components I would put on the unit. Um, I just need to double check and make sure it's not the actual compressor that's damaged um, and that it is the actual starting components and they go from there. So what we have to do is we have to remove the starting components, which the starting components are right inside here. You have your overload and your relay for your starting components right in here. What we're gonna do is they have a little, pla a little metal clip holding them on. Um, to take that metal clip off, it hooks on the bottom, wraps around, and then hooks on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and just check it to see if I have any problems with the compressor. So the bottom two pins are showing me about, nine, about 10 but they still are fluctuating. The top and the pin closest to me, with a better look, is right at, it's fluctuating quite a bit. Settling at right around five and five and a half. So we're pretty close as far as the winding goes. I'm gonna double check them again. There's this one down here. right at 10 so it is pretty close um, I can't definitely say if it's a bad compressor at this point or not because the the windings are showing fairly close what they should be registering I'm gonna now check for continuity I'm gonna check for it being shorted to ground all right so no short to ground so what we're going to do now is uh, 
discuss with the customer options and make a decision on the repair from here. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get the starting components pulled back out of the inside of the unit. We're hoping that we can get them out fairly easily. And the lines can flex some, you just don't want to bend them um, too significantly. So you get the part components back out. Once you got the components back out, you're gonna separate them. It is actually two separate pieces. You're gonna reuse this piece right here. This is just basically your overload. Um, the start relay on this thing is can you hear that, the rattle? That tells me that this, this relay is bad. So I'm gonna set that aside. I'm not gonna plug anything back in yet, but we're gonna eliminate the plug off of this plug that was onto the uh, starting opponents. I'm gonna peel back these wires a little bit. use is I am using a universal starting component kit. It basically works on all compressors for a refrigerator. You just have to follow your directions properly to hook it up. And I'll explain to you how I'm hooking this one up as we go through. The kit comes with two wire nuts and it comes with the starting component. It has two black wires that are by themselves which are four um, the actual power leads that we had stripped back on the unit. It has a red, white, and black wire that according to the package, the diagram shows you exactly which ones to hook it up to. It has your compressor, which it says common start run, and it tells you what color wire goes to those uh, plugs or pins off of your compressor. So I like to lay it on the floor, and since this one has one pin on top and two pins on bottom, I lay it on the ground just like the way that the picture looks as it is on there so I can look and say that the back one, which is the farthest one from me, is the white wire. So I'm going to take my white wire, I'm going to push it back onto that pin. And that one push onto my pin. The other bottom wire is the red. So I'm going to push my red wire onto the bottom pin. And then that leaves me my black wire, which goes to the top and a pin that's by itself, which is the common. Once I have them secured into place, I'm going to refine the two wires that I had snipped free. Doesn't matter which black wire goes to which wire coming from your unit. You find them, you put two of them together, and then I wire tie them. After I do wire tie, I make sure I don't have any wires sticking out the bottom. Make sure my wire tie is on there securely. Take my other black wire to the remaining wire left from my unit. And I put them together. I twist my wire ties on, my wire nut on there. Get down there nice and tight till you start seeing the wires actually twist around each other. Once that's on there, now on this one, it has, and you if you get the same one as I do, it's a URC0410. There's two plugs that are in line with the red and the white. It is an overload relay, which you want to plug back into the unit. Once you have that plugged back in, you want to find the plugs that you had disconnected and unplugged, plug them back together. And once you get them plugged back together, before buttoning up and putting the whole unit back together, I like to take my power cord and plug the unit back in, and we have compressor. So that took care of our problem. It could run for one day, one week, one month, one year, 10 years with this component on there. Cannot really say which way um, because there is always a potential for internal damage to the unit and I can already feel it is removing heat from the inside of the refrigerator. The wire, the hose over here is very warm and the ones on the other side are cold. 
I'm going to reassemble. I'm going to place these units back, these pieces back inside the unit. Make sure when you tuck them in there that they're not touching the roller so that you can have them back in there far enough and not have them come disconnected for some reason. I'm going to put the back back, back on. It's four screws and that completes our repair for the day. So as I'm putting this back together, something that I just want to remind you of and make sure this back panel has to go back on the unit. This back panel allows the fan to move air properly across your condensing coils so that it will remove heat properly. If it is not back on there, you will have a cooling problem. You will not be able to make your refrigerator or your freezer cold enough to maintain your food temperature. And then right here, you probably took one of these off the back if you have a water line going to your unit. You want to make sure your water line is in here. It is for your own safety and your house's own safety. If this is not on there, you have the potential to pull the water line out of your water valve or break it off at your water valve. Um, and if that happens, water will flow out of your main water line until you turn it off at the basement, at the crawl, in a closet, who knows where it is. Um, hopefully you do, and if it does break, it will continue to flow water until you turn it off. So make sure this is on to secure your water valve and your line to the back of your refrigerator. That concludes our repair for the day. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.